A fresh crack. Start the uh, last segment of the hour here. We're uh, I'm a little out of beer, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the. Uh, that's not beer. A little whiskey for? Oh, okay. <laughs> I said I'm out of beer, so I gotta go. I gotta. I gotta. I got gotta a audible. Rest- audible. Got to restock on the revelries. I know. Hit me up, Sean. All right. <laughs> so we're going to get a little into what this Bengals offense could be, a little bit more of leading to why I came to Mixon over Melvin. Um, and let's just tell us about Sean McVay. Talk <laughs> talk about what could be or what might be awful. So we got Zach Taylor coming in for Cincinnati here. Um. And he's talked to Sean McVay before, that's right. right? So a lot of lot of skeptical uh, <laughs> people around the league on what this could be. A lot of people's picks to say and that this could just go really wrong and this could be a dumpster fire and it could be awful. Even worse than the Bengals are most of the time. <laughs> right. No. Uh, they're usually middle of the road. It can't be worse. Mar- Marvin Lewis kept him. Marvin Lewis brought in Hugh Jackson. Kept him right at, uh, and he was a good offensive coordinator for a little yeah, while. I know, over there. I know, I know. R.I.P. Not yeah. last year, but you know what I mean. So you got Zach Taylor coming in, and whether what you think about it or not is for you to decide, but we just want to talk about it a little bit. Um, what what Taylor kind of led off with is, is what they want to do and how they want to do it. Um, he said that the roster was not well enough set up to execute the scheme in the run game um, how they want to do it. So basically, their roster was inadequate to to do to do what they wanted to do. What have I gotten myself into? Right. If you <laughs> a quote was, uh, we're gonna have, uh, we're going to place a strong focus on the run game, and it all plays off of that. If you can't get the run game going, then the rest of your offense struggles. Preach. And he just says how he wants to bring in more competition at all positions, and competition, you know, breeds healthy gains uh, typically. For all about for his your games, squad bro. there, um, and then se- the secret to the Rams' success was leading uh, the NFL in rushing DVOA by a wide margin um, and third in yards per attempt uh, a game. Which you know, obviously before McVay got there, R- Todd Gurley wasn't Todd Gurley yet, and or hadn't been, and he had shown some signs, but wasn't there. They they got in there. Now that they have a good offensive line. A great offensive line, but some of that is probably dictated to getting the right pieces to run the scheme that they had. Right. Um, they did a good job of revamping the offensive line when McVay got in there. Taylor tried to come in here and kind of do a similar thing, drafting Jonah Williams right off the rip, um, which is a huge bummer for wah, them wah. To, to lose him for the year. So that bummer that really sucks on what they're doing. But their next pick is Drew Sample, who is a tight end, but the best blocking tight end basically in the nation. Make sure you hit up the FFDynasty.com. There's an article about how he's a, a, co- a key cog in this uh, offensive wheel that right. they're trying to develop. And you can follow uh, the writer of that article at the Sofa Scout on Twitter. Jeff Abercrombie. It is very, uh, it's it's kind of hilarious, to, but there are two different types of tight ends. But McVay took a tight His first draft pick was a second round pick because they didn't have a one. And he took a tight end. And then Zach Taylor takes Drew. They take the offensive lineman in the first round but then in the second round they take a tight end but it's it's a blocking tight end but right but which they didn't really throw to sample we're getting on a sidebar here they didn't really throw to sample up until this last year and then he only dropped one ball catching 34 or 35 balls thrown at him so it's not like he's just going to be in there and can't do it he's completely incapable of doing anything else Mm -hmm. he's going to be some sort of a weapon but he's in there and being drafted to help execute a run game right he's not gerald everett being compared to jordan reed right gotcha but could turn into a, a good dual threat player we just hadn't seen yet. So that is a nice cog in the wheel for them. Going to the rest of the offensive line, they have holdover Cordy Glenn that they signed, which didn't have a great year last year, but is certainly capable of having decent season. So that's going to be your left tackle. Um, Clint Bowling, he's had really good years in the past. He's been he slipped a little bit. And then you have last year's first round draft pick and Billy Price, which I think is going to be huge. Uh, for this offense, a really strong player. You go. I watched uh, four mixing games on the uh, coaches' film and went back and watched the whole thing before we did this just to figure out how I felt about it. Um, and the first game of the year, you see Billy Price out there just getting out, road grading, doing a, a fantastic job. And, and you see it through the se- second game, gets injured in the second game, and then sits out for a while. And uh, you could definitely tell uh, the center position was not 
being as well played by the backup. So Billy Price being back in there is a huge upgrade for this offensive line. Uh, they signed John Miller from the Browns or from the Bills, who may be average player. Uh, also, Christian Westerman is there. He's been drafted. He drafted in 16 by the Bengals. He hasn't started yet. They've been kind of cultivating him. He's going to have an opportunity to, to battle for one of those guards positions. Um, and then probably the worst player on their offensive unit right now is Bobby Hart. They did just bring him back. He didn't perform very well last year. But something else that nobody talks about is that they did in the fourth round invest in another offensive lineman, Michael Jordan. What? Um, right. So, I mean, with that name, you're, just, you're destined to be awesome. Um, you can't name your kid that anymore, right? Like, <laughs> I don't know why you would, but <laughs> right. hey, maybe he's the third. I don't know. <laughs> Traded up to acquire Michael Jordan in the fourth round. So they, they moved up. There was other positions of need that the Bengals needed and wanted, but they went ahead and revamped and re-went back at the offensive line. Which I like that. Right. Just load them up. Give, sure. Give me more. The more offensive line in the competition, merit, which, baby. If that's a problem. Load them up. Right. So he's a versatile player. He could play center or either of the guard positions. Um, his claim to fame is he's the first freshman to start every single game for Ohio State since Orlando Pace. It's a good name. Um, and then name. in that time, um, he was first team All-American at center in 18. So this past year. Um, and then a left guard All-American in 2016, 2017, first team All-Big Ten. So... By all means, should be a pretty strong player here. Got him in the fourth round. Offers versatility. Can kind of play swing all through that center guard area, giving him some versatility. So if somebody comes in and struggles, you know, you have a potential and maybe Michael Jordan where you got something really good. Um, and the Westerman guy is something that they were excited about. And we'll see. So basically, after Joe Mixon rips off a nice run in week three and the play by play goes and highlights Michael Jordan, you're going to be like, oh, I remember Casey talking well, about that. He's not in the mix for starting just yet. <laughs> but um, just wanted to touch on the offensive line. Now, PFF was unkind to this line, as much people were saying they were very poor, terrible line, but poorly graded. But there's a couple of decent pieces in here, and if they could put it all together, they got a new offensive line coach, Texas A&M uh, old offensive line coach. Shout out Travion Williams. Um, so interesting there. They're they're building building something different, and they're going to switch the scheme a little bit. They're going to go to um, a more a bit of a of a wide zone concept, which they did still run a good bit last year, and it was Joe Mixon's best play uh, percentage wise was the wide zone plays. Uh, from the last year, just his running style again, fix that wide zone. Hey, he's quick. He's fast. He's kind of a cutty lateral runner and gets up to speed quick so he can put that foot in the ground and get up. Uh, so that really works out. And, you know, that's what McVeigh does. The Rams were well above everybody else in outside zone runs last year. And this is where uh, Taylor comes from. So you could see a lot of that going on. So that bodes well for Mixon. People could trash the offensive line, but I mean, Mixon still had 1,100 yards and missed two games last year. So, yeah. I mean, how how terrible could it be? Like, it and was bad saw, in spots, but... We saw some really good-looking pass catches and, and, and run after catch from the guy. Right. So then, kind of, what's going on with the offense then? So, if, if you told Sean McVay he could have uh, A.J. Green as his number one receiver, he'd be happier than a pig and shit, I, I suppose. <laughs> like, that... Before we go any further, if you needed a, I think he's the number one veteran trade wide receiver that you should be going pick and picking up. Nobody is hated on harder than AJ Green, and all the guy has done has been a perennial top ten player whenever he's out there for the last ten years. Agree. There's a chance if you're right right now, you should stop what you're doing and send out a second and a third for thir a second and a third round pick next year for AJ Green and see what the guy says. Yeah, and Jay Wayne asked me if I would trade a first round pick for AJ Green if I didn't earn the 112 111 110 and maybe i won them or acquired them somehow i probably would if my team was ready to go just grab that guy and, and try draft? to go win a championship in night in the 19 draft oh i'll give you a better pick than that for aj green right now i'm, I'm just saying like if you want to if you want to if you didn't earn a out, lesser pick you right if, if i didn't earn a lesser pick like if i if i didn't if i earned the 112 then i'm not trading the 112 or 19 or 110 to get AJ Green. I'm Why saying, not? You just won, so you got a good team. Oh, you're right. You're right. And you yes. want to win again. If I earn, if I if I earn the one, you're, you're right. Sorry. If I earn the one twelve, 
then that I'm that I'm then you're a good or one nine one eight. If you're a championship squad. Right. You're trading your first round right. pick for. Sorry AJ about Green. that. Yes, yeah. yes. So you had it backwards. I had it backwards. Gotcha, I did. Gotcha. Um, I like it. So moving along here, if you could, you got three receivers out there. You got Brandon Cooks. You got uh, Cooper Cup, and you have Robert, Robert Woods. Woods. I mean AJ Green. Probably the best receiver out of any of those guys. No doubt about Tyler it. Tyler Boyd could probably do he somewhat of what Cooper Cup can do. He did it last year. There's no somewhat. He and did then it last you have year. John Ross who could potentially take the top off of you. You just have to make people respect you a little bit. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. And you're going to add all these motions and jet sweeps in of what they're doing and all these other things. Good player to do that kind of stuff with. You know what? So interesting offense moving forward. John Ross isn't Brandon Cooks today, and he may never be because Brandon Cooks is a tough little right. guy. I'm not taking anything but, away from Brandon. I'm not trying right. to compare them. No, no, I'm, I'm just, just saying. But you just, uh, first of all, like you just said, A.J. Green's better than anything the Rams can offer, wide receiver-wise. Tyler Boyd's a stud. Right. He might not be the top level elite. He may, he's not AJ Green, and he arguably may not be as good as a Brandon Cooks or somebody like that. But he does what he's supposed to do, and yeah. he, he was he was really 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 good last year. And like you said, if John Ross just moves side to side in jet sweeps motion, run and and, and takes his four two nine forty or whatever it is across the field horizontally catches a couple bombs and, here and then there. goes vertical with it too it just it just plays tricks on the right. defense he's a he's a weapon and whether or not his weapon relates to or, or goes into huge fantasy success doesn't matter right his his skills will help out everybody else on the team yeah it's a it's a role it's not he it's doesn't need role. to be the best he just needs to be able to take the top off and a probably bit. a really and decent best ball receiver going into this year yeah and i heard i listened to a, a matt waldman podcast and they talked about a lot of the same stuff i had had this written out and i was like oh this is this is pretty great um uh, they, they think the same thing i'm thinking yeah um, nice. so let me go before i get off that i know all, i know all of all, all of our trade talk is on on patreon but i talk about trades all the time and people and I say I can I can do this and I can do that and we don't talk much trades on the free show anymore just because but last year in the preseason John Ross caught a touchdown and he looked good and I traded him the very next day for a second round draft pick in the rookie draft right and it's just like from waiver wire to second round pick, pick I Both. literally picked him up off waiver wire and I traded him for a second round pick and the rest is history right you know and I've used that second round pick as a cog in another big big trade and that's just one of the things when I said last year when I was like cheap John Ross cheap John Ross cheap John Ross and then everybody's like well he's still cheap because he sucks there was a window there and I capitalized right. on it yeah and Patreon Patreon people went they took were that there. ride with right. me. they sure were so good call Big Co um, just to finish up other parts and pieces of talking about this offense Mixon's a really good pass catcher. I think it's an underrated part of his game. I'm I'm pretty sure that they're going to get him more involved in that. The Rams like to throw it to the back. I think Joe Mixon can cause a problem throwing it uh, out of the backfield to him. He can kind of catch it on swing passes and down the field. He did a good job from what I saw of doing a lot of hands catching. Um, and then he's that, a problem. That ball, that ball sticks in yeah, there. Yeah, he's a problem. I saw one hand catches. He's a problem then when he's in the open field. Um, so... I guess getting back to Joe Mixon, like we saw what it could be last year when AJ Green was down, like I said already, and Dalton was out in and out, and the offensive line was struggling a little bit, and it wasn't great, and wasn't the most creative offense going out there with Bill Lazor, which Bill Lazor is not a terrible coordinator, but the reason they hired Zach Taylor is for new, innovative, right. awesome stuff, and if right. they could be anywhere near what the Rams are, Joe Mixon is probably going to end up in the top four of those running backs that we were talking about of hey you want to you want one of these four picks right uh, next year and could easily elevate into that spot exactly um, or he it could be an absolute dumpster fire but we saw the dumpster fire it can't be that much worse than it was this year and he was still Mixon was still a good player there it's, it's not going to be worse than it was last year even if it's not clicking on all cylinders because of the way they'll make you defend side to side they're not going to be the rams weren't Quite, the Rams were obviously the you know second best offense last year, first best offense the year before, but even still they don't they don't quite make you defend every square inch of the field like the Saints do. But they're that's what they do. They you have right. to the, for the Rams you have to defend sideline boundary to sideline boundary no matter what because right. they got their jet sweeping all over the place. They're they're that's running what, yeah you, you know stick John Ross in that kind exactly. of a situation. So and it's, the and Bengals it's are, that's their scheme is going to come out there and stretch the defense out. 
and and may and then Joe Mixon's going to hit. We that. think we don't we don't know. Well, that's what they're going to try to do. Right. Like well, it's just like I said about Kingsbury. I mean, Zach Taylor. He already said he's going to go off the zone run. You know, mm-hmm. so he's not going to come over there and be like, okay, we're going to just be you know three tight ends every play right it's, he's not gonna he's got that job for a reason and right. they were like well you could have run similar stuff to sean mcveigh okay come on over yeah. here and show us how to do it right like you said they want to they want a 2019 offense right they they they, they want to move forward and that's what they that's what they're aiming for it could be a great success it could be awful but i think joe mixon will still be fine i think aj green like aj green was still eating like just watching those games and watching aj green play the Ravens in that first, I think it was the second game of the season. Torched them. Comes, three, three comes, touchdowns. Comes off of, off of press coverage, catches a guy, shrugs him off of him, and then outruns two more guys to the end zone. He's 30, and he's still just straight up outrunning cats. Yeah. All like 30, 40 yards down the field. Yeah. And it was just like, this guy's still got juice. Get as much AJ Green as he can. Um, and I, I, want, I did want to touch on a little Geo. Probably pretty cheap. Could be deployed and, and have, have a little bit of fun. Uh, with some Geo right now in drafts. I mean, still, Geo was a great player. Um, and I think he's got one more year left on his deal. So even if he doesn't do anything great with the Bengals this year, he could go somewhere else and catch a nice role in someone who wants to be uh, have a nice pass-catching player who can catch you a couple, get a couple good runs inside for you. So I think Geo is a fun, underrated player. Uh, well, low, like, low draft. I like it when capital. people said, well, Geo Gio wasn't good last year. You know what Geo was good for? When Joe Mixon wasn't in... Gio was a start, right? For I, sure. J, G, Gio started in my team last year four weeks in a row when G, when Joe Mixon didn't play, or it might have been three weeks, whatever. When Joe Mixon's right. hurt, Gio's a start. So, and, and I want to roll this point into into the next. Obviously, point. they got Tra- Travion Williams now. Exactly. And, so I want to roll that into all the the Rodney Anderson and the Travion into one thing here. Like again, when like you said, Mixon was out, Gio was good. Like you just saw Taylor come from an offense where. Their offense was centered around this one player who was probably one of the best players in football, and they used the shit out of him, and he got hurt. I could see that him saying, hey, I learned a lesson over there. Mixon's still going to get a decent amount of work, but hey, we need to mix Geo in here mm-hmm. and, and get a little bit more Geo than you saw last year. And if Mixon got hurt, you would get some good Geo. And then on top of that, you didn't spend anything on Travion Williams, which I think is a great Stole. Giovanni Bernard Stole him. compliment great pass catcher i think he's a really good runner of the football and he's familiar with the offensive line coach who i'm sure was lobbying for the travion williams draft um and then you have rodney anderson who they drafted who kind of mimics what mixon does like right. kind right. of a similar player so a maybe they're saying hey i don't want to pay running backs we're, we're going to let Mixon filter out and we'll bring in Rodney Anderson and Travion will be our next wave of guys or two. They've seen players get hurt and they want to know, Hey, we got these backups ready to roll who we're not paying anything for and or ready maybe to go. So there's something going on with Mixon. They're not telling people about maybe, yet. but I, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, they're still, they're, they're heaping praise on Mixon saying, you know, Mixon's going to love this. He's going to be awesome in this blah, Perfect blah, blah, fit blah, for the scheme. Right. Yeah. I mean, um, I think if anything for the Rodney Anderson part, Let's get him in here for a year and see if he can be healthy and, and look Let's good. Let's get him healthy. We yeah. don't need him. Don't even play with yeah. him for a year. I don't think I'm not right now. I'm not talking and thinking about mixing walking. I'm not. I'm yeah. not necessarily saying that, but they might not want to pay. Like they just saw them pay Gurley and him get hurt. So right. why not? Let's get Rodney, who we think can probably do the same thing as Mixon. If he, if he doesn't want to take a decent contract, we'll say, hey, see you later. We're we're gonna roll with Rodney, and we we get, we got ourselves a year for him to get healthy and see what we got. Like you said, I'm picking. So up I think Rodney's a, a, was one of my favorite players, and still should be drafted. Even if you got to reach a little high for Rodney in your, in your startups and your rookie drafts, you don't really have to reach for him in rookie drafts necessarily. But I mean, Early I think he's, third round I think he's is an awesome, basically a reach, an awesome point. draft, an awesome pickup, and then Travion's just not even being thought of. So. I think two good steals to sit on your practice squad for a long time to come. Yeah, we we were very high on both those guys Mm pre-draft, and then it was such a bummer. They both go to the Bengals. So just trying to make some sense out of that, a little bit of sense on the offense. A bummer right now, but like you said, maybe after this year they don't pay Gio and he walks, and then maybe Joe Mixon either A, gets hurt, which all this could happen this year. We've seen teams lose three running backs after two Mm -hmm. weeks. I say that all the time. It can happen. Maybe maybe we see a lot more Travion Williams than we think this year. All right. Well, that, that sums up that for me. You guys ready to get out of here? Yeah, that's. Uh, I think that's a wrap. We'll take it over to the Patreons, do some running back rankings, do some uh, trading up and down in, in a startup draft for your pleasure. 
and have a good time. If you guys are watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button, hit the like, comment in the section below. Hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty, at IMC Myers, at Dynasty Big Co, at J Wayne's World. Uh, if you're on iTunes, please hit us up with that five star review. That'd be very kind of you. We see you guys coming in. That number's going up each uh, each and every week, so we really appreciate everyone that's already done that. And uh, till next time, you've been listening to the FF Dynasty podcast. <laughs>